we're going to have some hot dogs. It's no secret that men are attracted to beautiful women, but there's a special case to be mentioned when it comes to actress Anna de Armas, who seems to amplify such notions of beauty to a degree I haven't seen before. Because ever since her role on Blade Runner 2049, there seems to be so many more memes and this idea being pushed forward of a strange, somewhat new fantasy. The perfect yet unattainable dream girl who can cure your lonely condition. Which makes me curious as to why this feels so attractive to watch and why it has ultimately become a huge selling point for any of her movies. The simplest answer is that by having her in your film, it automatically means more men would be interested in going to see them. But for some reason, perhaps because of the age of the internet and the meme culture that we live in, or maybe even just how she looks herself, this feels particularly distinct or more pronounced with Anna de Armas when compared to other attractive women in the past who have equally been seen as beautiful and unattainable. Because truthfully, yes, all attractive women in popular culture to a certain extent exhibit that same type of feeling, the notion of being unattainable and a sexual object to aspire for or obtain. But the difference with Anna Diamas to me also stems from that line from Blade Runner that says, you look lonely, I can fix that. With just those seven words, she is encapsulating certain groups of men and perhaps broader psychological characteristics or traits within other groups of men that subscribe to this idea of feeling lonely and searching for comfort in attractive women who appear beautiful, emotionally available, but ultimately out of reach. Her role in Blade Runner positions her as the perfect AI companion, which is to be a figure who not only is unattainable, but who also promises to soothe loneliness and maybe in ways that no human can. Even to some men who have successful and happier lives with partners that they deeply love and trust, there seems to be some sort of appeal to this notion of finding comfort for the parts of them that feel deeply alone or that are deeply aware of their most primal and darker aspects of their nature. From feeling feelings of, say, existential dread, the questions of their place in the universe, or to even more biological and physiological urges that make them feel interested in other women to the point where they risk cheating and losing the ones they've already gained. I have this sense that men, especially those that are the loneliest or that struggle to socialize with women generally, would be more drawn to images like Anna de Armas. She represents this prospect of a future where you'll be able to acquire your very own nurturing and loving artificial intelligence, which is a godsend to people who could never have had the chance to find someone like that in reality. She represents the unattainable woman, but the one that has qualities that lonely men and perhaps all men would want for. Beauty, care, and validation. Whether they could physically do anything with her or her AI counterparts is beside the point, because it's just enough to live and breathe in this fantasy created. This is also partly what leads into men of simp culture or incel communities, with men in these groups admiring women or characters that simply do not exist for qualities that are also incredibly rare to find, or rather are not up to the standard that they would want when comparing women in real life to those that they see up on the screen. It fosters men that either over-idealize celebrities like Anna de Armas or that grow bitter for not having that in their own real world. But in both senses, loneliness is going to be brought about. Men who view Anna de Armas in these ways are almost bound to be disappointed in the long run while being somewhat elated and happy in the short run. Like a quick dopamine fix, seeing her on the screen calling to you will make you feel great for a second before you realize you're still in your pajamas, sitting on the couch and have got nothing better to do because you're unemployed and alone. For some other quote-unquote regular men, actresses like Anna de Armas and her role in Blade Runner also feel that obsession of searching for emotional comfort to help with any sense of loneliness that they may feel or experience. Some men might know that she is clearly unattainable, but some men might still hope that in the future they could have access to someone like her to help fulfill all or some of their emotional needs and desires, which is especially reinforced by the image of using someone like Ryan Gosling, an obviously attractive and wealthy man, who is put next to Anna de Armas as someone who still requires that emotional support from an unattainably beautiful but not real woman. Of course, he's playing a character, but the image of seeing him contrasted against her still speaks to some degree of that subtle idea that no matter what type of man or how he looks like, men could always feel a little bit happier if they had someone like Anna de Armas 
in their life, or rather her AI counterpart. But again, this just feeds into their feelings of loneliness because it isn't real right now. And even if that day did come, would they truly feel complete and emotionally content with someone that has been perfectly programmed to make them feel exactly like that? I guess it all matters on perception. Anna de Armas isn't the first woman to bring up these ideas, nor will she be the last. But I hope that by attempting to understand her beyond her attractiveness helps clarify some deeper notions or psychological reasons for why she can be such a powerful object of desire for so many men, especially in Hollywood, movies, and the broader pop culture. And moreover, how strangely fascinating it is that men of different backgrounds, interests, or circumstances can tap into their own sense of loneliness as a resource or motivation that drives this attractiveness to her, even if that journey to obtain the unobtainable ultimately leads them to not finally curing their loneliness, but to actually entrenching it even further. Bailas conmigo. Te doy lo que quieras. Un masaje. Tu cena favorita cuando lleguemos a la casa. Baila conmigo. You look lonely. Dormimos juntos. Nos vamos de paseo. Like it. I told you not to fuss. And yet, voila, voila, petit. I miss you, baby, sweet. Honey, it's beautiful. Just put your feet up. Relax. Thank you. 